Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 17 of Super Sports, the review series for the vehicles on Gran Turismo 6 which are for sure beyond your average sports car but at the same time not arguably quite on the same level as a supercar. And the reason why, as some of you will have probably guessed, why I'm emphasising that intro is because this is one of those models which could possibly be a bit controversial. Now, I am, of course, classifying it as a super sports model, but an argument could be made, like some other vehicles which I've featured and will feature in my review series, that this is, in fact, a supercar not a super sports car. And although I can understand why someone would say that, I would also say I personally don't believe that it is, because primarily Lamborghini made it as a less powerful, lower class alternative to the Murcielago. Or the Murcielago. That is obviously a supercar. So what would be the point of making two supercars at the same time? Pretty much no company does that. Even supercar companies only have one primary model with different versions of that model. So, I'm sure there are people who would disagree, but I'm classifying this car as a super sports model. And it is, of course, the Gallardo, particularly the LP560. Now, this is a widely loved car. It's a very, very hot selling car for Lamborghini in both this its updated visual form and also the original form as well thousands have been sold probably one of Lamborghini's best selling models ever if not the best it's powered by a 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10 it's all wheel drive as most if not all Lambos are these days apart from the Balboni of course and its specs are pretty good when fully tuned. It produces a fraction under 800 horsepower and 512 pound-feet of torque. It weighs in at 1155 kilos, produces 692 horsepower per tonne, and has a PP when, again, fully tuned, of 615. The price is also befitting of a Lamborghini at just over a quarter of a million credits. So pretty expensive for a super sports model, around the same kind of money as a Spyker C8 La Voilette, which is also a very exclusive, expensive car. This car though does have quite a few advantages that many other super sports models potentially don't have, such as all-wheel drive. Now all-wheel drive isn't without its disadvantages, it does make the car more prone to understeer, but it also gives you more confidence to really play with the car, throw it through corners, while not really having to worry as much as in a rear-wheel drive car that the car will bite back. Now that said, this is a Lamborghini, so it can bite back, and it does. In fact, the Gallardo is a vehicle on Gran Turismo 6 which is quite well known for being tricky to tune, especially when fully upgraded. But as a general rule, I personally found that that status that Lamborghinis have on the game, not just the Gallardo, but the Murcielago as well, and the Reventon, isn't really deserved, because it's not that hard to bring the car into line. This car in the video that I'm driving is running 800 horsepower, and it's not that difficult to drive. I would recommend having no camber on these models, and also putting your torque split for the centre diff to a 50-50 split so that the front wheels get an adequate share of the power. You'll find that this makes the car much, much more controllable, much less skittish, and much less prone to diving under braking, which is one of the traits that it has in its relatively untuned form, but with all the upgrades. So it's a car that kind of has a bit of a bad name in some ways for tuning, and it doesn't really deserve it, I don't think. It's a very strong straight line machine, as you'd expect. The top speed is around the 270 region. Acceleration off the line is, as you'd expect, phenomenal because of the all-wheel drive. And around the track, it can keep up with easily any other super sports car, even up to and including the Nissan GTR. 
on certain tracks, of course. So overall, it's pretty expensive compared to some of the other cars in this list, and it has not really a bad name, but it's known for being one of the trickier models of its type. But if you set up the car properly and don't treat it like an imbecile, it will serve you well. So that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.